Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for attending today's webinar, Preparing for the Next Crisis, GIS Lessons Learned and Best Practices. My name is Amy, and I am the Membership Associate at National States Geographic Information Council. If you are unfamiliar with our organization, NISHIC exists to advance the effective national coordination of geospatial information by supporting state-level cooperation. We serve as a national forum for the development of capable and future-oriented geospatial leadership. If you'd like to learn more information on how to get involved, please visit our website, www.nishik.org and I will pop that in the chat box shortly. Just a couple of reminders for today. All attendees have been muted on entrance and there will be time for Q&A. Please place your questions in the chat box. They will be answered either in the chat box or to be read aloud at the end of the presentation. Additionally, a recorded version of this webinar will be made available afterwards. So be on the lookout for an email with that information. With that, I'd like to hand it over to Anthony Puzo from Esri State Government uh, for introduction. All right, thank you. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. And um, my name is Anthony Puzo with Esri. Um, and I, I, really, I just want to start out by saying I, I appreciate our partnership with NISJIC and the community here. And um, we see we see there's tremendous value in, in our partnership with NISJIC and the, the community at large. So uh, what we want to do today is, um, given the timing of this in June, it's now hurricane you know, season, um, is uh, talk about preparing for the next crisis and, uh, and some, some lessons learned and best practices over the last, you know, well, 50 years, but really the last, uh, the last two years have been pretty intense here for everybody. And so uh, leading the discussion today is Jeff Barani. He's, he serves as the emergency management and fire technical lead at Esri public safety team. Uh, he is responsible for working closely with the public safety team and customers to define uh, a, a set of solutions and industry focused solutions to promote uh, the vision value of the ArcGIS platform. He's also the operations manager for the disaster response program, the DRP that I know many of you have used uh, over the last couple of years. Um, so big thank you to Jeff for, for manning that and really getting our entire organization to rally around that and support our community at large. So. With that, I'm going to hand that over to, to Jeff, and he's going to walk through our agenda and what we're going over today. If you have any questions or anything, you can please feel free to put them in the chat, uh, and, and I'll try to respond to those um, uh, immediately there. And, uh, and we should have a few minutes at the end for some Q&A. So, uh, Jeff, you want to introduce yourself and take it away? Yeah, great. No, no, thanks, Anthony. Thanks for that introduction. And, you know, thank you all for attending today. It's actually a real honor for me to be able to, to speak to you and, and looking forward to sharing with you some of the things that we've learned, you know, over the past year and, and, and beyond. And so a couple of things that we wanted to, to cover today. So in terms of agenda, we wanted to, you know, look back at the COVID-19 you know, response and talk about some kind of lessons learned there. And um, we'll talk about how we've kind of folded a lot of that into our emergency management operations offering of the solution templates to really hopefully help jet fuel folks from a response perspective. Some best practices that we've seen from you, really the states ac across the community, will share with you some technology and solution uh, updates, provide some additional you know, resources that we think are helpful for you as you look to, to prepare and get ready for the upcoming you know, disaster seasons and a, and a couple of thoughts in, in closing and, and kind of next steps. Um, but but first of all, we want to start out by, by thanking all of you. I mean, the, the amount of work that was done for the COVID-19 response was, was amazing. And, you know, obviously we've got, you know, six example screenshots that were, you know, submitted to, to Jack from across, you know, many, many states. And there should be 50, you know, screenshots here. The, the amount of work that was just absolutely amazing and really, you know, truly inspiring. I mean, this is the first disaster where all 50 states were activated at the same time, all, you know, disaster disaster declarations for all counties, the, the scale and scope was, you know, really tremendous. And, you know, the, the work that you and your teams did was really kind of truly, you know, inspiring. Um, you know, Chris Vaughn and I from FEMA would, you know, comment as we prepared for the FEMA coordination calls, how the community seemed to evolve like years, you know, each week. And so, you know, through the heart of the COVID response, I mean, all of us kind of evolved kind of a career, you know, worth of, of work and everything that was done. So I guess, first of all, you know, thank you for, for all you've done. 
uh, and continue to do. I mean, many of you work in, you know, long hours, you know, 450 days of the response. Um, you know, obviously, as, as Anthony mentioned, we we have our ESRI disaster response program. We've had this, you know, for, for many years and basically to support our users in, in times of crisis and times of need and really when your capacities, you know, exceeded. And, you know, some of the key, key ways that we do that is providing, you know, additional software if you don't have it, helping with workflows, connecting folks to the community of geospatial data that often evolves and and getting folks you know into um, you know technical support so you know this is something we've been doing for you know 27 plus years in some you know kind of formal you know fashion and we have a website and an email alias here um, to be able to communicate that so i mean obviously in 2020 uh an unprecedented year, as you can all appreciate. Over, you know, over 5,500 organizations requested, you know, assistance from us. Um, you know, obviously beyond the scope of just a small kind of uh, team on, on the DRP side to be able to support all of their requests. And, uh, you know, frankly, we want to commun communicate to all of you that, you know, all of Esri was behind you for this, you know, response. All of Esri. I mean, um, all all teams and Anthony and his team and and Dan, the the solution engineers and the account managers. Managers were on the front lines, you know, making sure that, you know, we were reaching out to our users and you all had what you needed. Um, you know, software development pivoted their, you know, development priorities to help out with things. I mean, all divisions, you know, health team, you know, marketing, tech support, customer service. We even had the warehouse team helping us process, you know, DRP requests so we could do that, you know, effectively and efficiently to help kind of, you know, support um, you all. So, um, you know, really, we, we, we hope that this was valuable to you, we hope that you um, gain something from um, um, this response, and, and really, we, we are just trying to partner with the, the community, to the, the GIS community, all of you, NISJIC, and your your leadership to kind of help get us through, you know, all, all of this. So uh, again, this map obviously just shows that the DRP requests from the domestic perspective, and obviously there was, you know, not only COVID, but a very, you know, a, a busy hurricane and wildfire season uh, to boots. To, so just a tremendous amount of you know, kind of requests about you know across the community. So Anthony, is there anything you wanted to add there from the kind of response perspective? No, I just uh, appreciate the work your team did to respond to this and rally the whole company around it, and then um, just just the the community and the work that they did to respond to this issue and this pandemic has been just pretty amazing. And um, you know, thank you to everybody out there who who uh, who rallied their teams. Uh, at the states on uh, on responding to this, and I think uh, I think GIS really kind of sh showed very well um, for for this response. So thank you. Yeah, no, thanks, Anthony. Yeah, just just to, to emphasize, it's you know it's not just me. There's a whole DRP kind of core team supporting, and all of Esri was here. The our internal ICS chart for this was was crazy. I mean, you know, senior leadership. You know, Jack would pop on the coordination calls every once in a while. It was just uh, it was really amazing to see and a real kind of team effort. So you know, some of the things that we observed, you know, during during COVID is you know that ArcGIS and really the solution templates proved their agility and, and utility. You saw um, Scott Ottman and the solutions team just continuing to lit, to deliver solution templates to try and uh, meet the needs with, you know, re reporting cases or, or hubs or, or that type of thing, or, or coming soon, the return to work kind of set of solutions. So, you know, the, the ArcGIS in general and, and the solution templates that help streamline workflows really, you know, prove their agility, you know, and utility. You know, there was a lot of work also that was done, you know, on our side to help leverage and operationalize new data sources. Um, obviously, a lot of the, the social distancing metrics that were out there and the, and the resources that were you know, brought to bear, um, partners stepping up with their data, like you know, de Definitive Healthcare providing you know, bed information, you know, MCH you know, providing school closure information, um, SafeGraph you know, providing you know, weekly patterns data, you know, Facebook and the data for good. You know, and, and we, the team was just work to make this happen and just kind of add to your you know, arsenal and just do it you know, kind of on behalf of, of the community. And, and provide value to you. We certainly learned, uh, you know, as I said, a lot of a lot of lessons. We saw, you know, traditional, you know, frustrations. So our friend Ed Harrell, you know, shared this out on on Twitter, right? Frustrations during the response of, you know, no new spreadsheets, right? And I appreciate how we went through a digital transformation, at least in terms of his, uh, uh, you know, governance, right? And you know, being able to share, you know, this information. And normally it's like, you know, paper processes like maps or forms that don't scale. And certainly in COVID, we saw, you know, challenges 
challenges with spreadsheets and even you know on our own side just trying to keep track of all the work that was being done and hey pivoting to a new ways of doing that within you know GIS using crowdsource reporter to now kind of collect data now even experience builder lets you edit tables and kind of almost like an art sheets you know type of an environment so certainly a ton of lessons learned from from our side across you know all of this and you know those are just a couple I mean certainly there's a, a lot of lessons learned that we saw and didn't want to spend a ton of time on this here but certainly wanted to hit on that obviously the John Hopkins you know inspired many and you know the the, the great work that they did to operationalize all the data kind of across the globe I mean many of you benefited you know from ArcGIS scaling up like you know never before I mean who in any given day it could be you know John Hopkins or your state you know app that was getting you know thousands of requests per second you know on a concurrent basis and you know the Arctis online team is watching and managing you know all of that and we're seeing you know app scale you know like 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 never before we talked about you know data management processes that didn't scale and in operationalizing you know new data sources um you know obviously a tremendous amount of hubs that were um launched by the user community and we'll we'll talk about you know some of the lessons learned of hub you know across all of this um you know the the, the needs for a mobile first design in many cases especially with sharing information with the public um you know a lot of the infographics that were really you know popular and really resonated with decision makers um you, you know as, as anthony mentioned you know executives decision makers elected officials really realized the power of gis through the course of this event and that's you know we see that all the time through you know most crises it really kind of wakes people up to the power of gis when it can kind of come to the to the rescue and then you know the the user community worked together like you know many before i'm sure many of you were coordinating within your states and counties at a, at a regional level and at, at a national level and we saw these pockets of coordination that were just amazing to see the groups come together really bringing in health as a part of the fold um, and, and truly amazing and, and really you know in our belief you know gis made a difference you the community rose to the challenge like never, never before and i think hopefully took a lot away from that to be able to, to rise to, to the next challenge so this is just you know kind of covid right this is just kind of the the covid response but you know this this eye chart of 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 disasters and crises including you know covid you know represent what you know esri's responded to or supported um in some form or fashion over the past you know 27 years and so certainly we've seen you know both uh, the technology evolve in a general sense right from printing paper maps for the northridge earthquake in 1994 to now you know mobile mobile apps and you know the um that type of thing of of where we are today with web gis you know gis has evolved you know tremendously as as well as the user community and so we've learned a bunch you know through that process we continued you know to learn from from you in fact you know share a lot of those lessons learned in, in with with others within esri we've done a lot of internal retrospective and sharing um, what worked and didn't work with uh, you know software development with the solutions team with others to help improve you know you know processes and all that so you know, looking forward, you know, how can we take some of those lessons learned? How can we build on the success of, of, of last year and our, you know, 400 plus days of activation and help to prepare for, for what's next? And, you know, given the, the world that we live in today, not only is this, you know, traditional hazards like hurricanes and wildfires and, and tornadoes and the like, but it's, you know, non-traditional crises that we're facing as well. I mean, it's crazy to me that we've had DRP requests for ransomware attacks. I mean, and there's, there, there's new challenges that we're faced with in, in, in today's society. And, and, and uh, you know, I think that we're well positioned, well, well served to be able to face those challenges as, as we move forward. And we have some, some ideas, some tools, some topics to be able to, to help with that. That, that level of preparation, I think, is, is, is recognized, you know, globally, right? The, the Global Mayor's Task Force identifying the need to be more resilient given all the crisis. How do we protect against, you know, future threats, including, you know, a climate crisis and with a, the call to an action to, to invest so we're, we're better prepared, you know, for, for what's next. And, you know, obviously as many of us, you know, cringe at the, at the, what, you know, the disaster seasons that we're looking forward to, you know, have in store for us and certainly the challenge that we face, we, we 
we know it's going to be, you know, challenging and above average, you know, Atlantic hurricane season, and they're even raising the averages. So something to be obviously, you know, keep an eye on. We already have had, you know, three name storms in the Atlantic already, you know, parts of the West are, are drier than they've been, you know, in, in hundreds of years. I mean, today he, I'm here in Colorado and I smell smoke, you know, from, you know, the wildfires, you know, already and it's, and, and it's June. So certainly we know that, you know, the upcoming seasons will, will be challenging, but we can certainly rely on, you know, what we've seen in the past, what are our lessons learned and, you know, really the value that, that GIS can bring to operations, the value that GIS can bring to overcoming, you know, challenges that all of you are, are faced with, you know, the ability to monitor rapidly changing conditions, um, the ability to understand the potential impact quickly, the ability to assess and report damage, not on paper forms that are collected on spreadsheets in the rain, but in modern modern ways using you know smartphones or the other tools. Um, the ability to quickly and effectively communicate with the media and the public and really kind of calm um, the, the public by sharing information with them in a, in a transparent way and, and not by putting, taking a picture of your finger on the map, by having modern scalable web apps that are backended by the cloud through, through ArcGIS Online to get that information out. And then finally, really kind of an emerging trend is being able to coordinate and integrate you know, all activities from, from stakeholders. And we saw that done you know, for with a hub you know, perspective you know, uh, with, with great success over this past year. So, so for, for me, I think these are the key, really the four key ways now to think about how um, GIS and can help you modernize emergency management you know, operations. This is really the, the value and the benefit that we see. You know? So if you don't remember anything from this pr presentation, it's really these you know, four things, helping to maintain situation awareness, helping to conduct damage assessment you know, quickly and effectively, you know, helping to control the public message, and then finally being able to coordinate with, with, with stakeholders through, through all of this. And you know, our solutions team has helped us you know, create and continue to update a set of apps to help you, a set of apps to, for you to be productive you know, right away if you don't have these capabilities in place today, a, so, a set of tools for maintaining situational awareness, the, the dashboard with a map and key performance indicators for your command set, or an editing app to help keep that you know, up to date, uh, a story map for briefing purposes to be able to share that with, with the stakeholders, um, you know, tools for damage assessment, and we'll share some updates here you know, later on, templates to help you share information with the public you know, very quickly and, and follow best practices to do that in a standardized way using you know, views and the, and the like to make sure you're following you know, best practices. And then finally, a set of templates to help from a, a stakeholder engagement perspective now using, using Hub. Now, there was ways to you know, help you get started you know, quickly in these, in these areas. These are all a set of solution templates. You can deploy these using the, the solutions app. There's more details that we have on, on the solutions page, and we, we can share some of these links afterwards uh, with you through, through, through email. And so uh, make it quick and easy for you to get started you know, along um, these lines and obviously supported by, by tech support. One, one thing that I wanted to mention, we're not going to show it here because I don't think the video would work, would work well, but we've actually created a three-minute video that really kind of incorporates this, this messaging, incorporates this, this information. Um, it kind of talks through the story of a, of a sample EOC and how they're responding to, to a wildfire. So it's 180 seconds long. We'll share this you know, link with you. And I think it's you know, something that you can take a look at. One, you know, for you to look at yourself. Two, perhaps share with some of your you know, constituents and others to help them understand what's possible with, with modern you know, web GIS these days. And frankly, three, you may just want to share this with your family and friends and tell them you know, this is what you do for a living. So this is certainly you know, a resource for you, you know, at several several, you know, different levels. Um, so, you know, for us, I mean, that's how we think we see, you know, the, some of the best practices of GIS can be, you know, used. But, I mean, you validate this for us. You, the user community, you know, demonstrate back to us that these patterns of use are, are work and these apply. And, you know, you all do amazing work through each disaster and crisis, you know, along these, you know, different areas, whether, you know, it's wildfire information from Oregon or, you know, situation awareness from, you know, GOSAP last year with all the or hurricanes or 
or conducting damage assessment quickly from wildfires or hurricanes or the like, or sharing information with the public, like, you know, Virginia or in Oregon here, and then, you know, coordinating um, with others through, through hubs. We'll talk a bit more about, you know, both New Jersey and FEMA, you know, later on, but the, the user community continues to do um, amazing work along, you know, this regard. And we, you know, all of Esri really learns from you and you all in, in terms of your, your, your great work there. Now, in order to help, you know, help you all learn from, from each other, we've, we've, we've attempted to here to start to inventory examples from the emergency management, you know, user com community in this public gallery. So this is a, a public gallery, the, the, the link's there, and we'll share it with you, you know, afterwards, where we've taken a start to start to inventory kind of across states, across national organizations, and across, you know, workflows, the tr traditional emergency management cycle, where we see great examples um, across the user community. And we invite you to share Share, you know your examples you know with us we have a survey one two three form that you can fill out that will you know um, notify us when you have have examples so we, we definitely encourage you to you know, not only explore this but also contribute uh, a lot of the great work that that you all are doing so we can share this uh, across the uh, user community so um, again just you know something we wanted to, to share with you so um, you know, I wanted to, we wanted to get into a bit more details in terms of some of the recent, you know, you know, great examples we've seen from a, from a couple of states. And we wanted to share with you some great work that some of the states are doing. So first of all, you know, a, a shout out to, to Zach in Oklahoma in terms of the great work that he's done over the past, you know, couple of years, you know, back to, to 2019, and I'm sure before in terms of public damage reporting and really using that as a mechanism to help streamline the damage assessment reporting process in Oklahoma, starting with, you know, kind of mobilizing the public, mobilizing, you know, elected officials, the, the governor even tweeting out links to the survey one, two, three forms to have the public report in damage. And then the state and counties could go in and then kind of verify a lot of that information, a lot of the information that was collected to help really kind of streamline that, that process from a damage assessment perspective. And, and uh, you know, obviously pull that information together as quickly as possible and get that to FEMA as, as quickly as possible to help expedite some of the recovery funding. So really great work that's been done there. And this was written up in, in, uh, in ARC News uh, over a year ago. And so that's a great you know, story or use case to, to dig into. Um, next, a, a shout out to, to Daniel Stolb and the team and the great work that they did in the, in the wildfire response you know, last year in, in Oregon. And just the, uh, the, the devastation that was there was just you know, tr tremendous. You know, the, the multiple fires you know, causing you know, you know, you know, thousands of homes to be, to be damaged and, and destroyed. The, you know, number of deaths. It is just a, a tragic event. But the Daniel and team, you know, responded well, and, and you had some great examples that we can all learn from from a from a GIS perspective. And Daniel's, you know, shared his story, you know, with the uh, NABSIC conference earlier this year, and in you know through this story map, and a lot of great things to learn. Having great situation awareness, you know, apps that you know can inform decision makers and, and elected officials on the current situation, informing the public on on the current evacuation status and the like, you know in consolidating that together across, you know, 55 counties to have a single um, unified view, um, you know, pulling in other resources. And so in this case, emacking in other resources from other states to really help build the team um, and, and not just have it be, you know, Daniel, you know, by himself um, um, responding. Another great kind of lesson learned in, in strategies to scale and augment your staff during crisis. And, you know, mo moving forward, looking to, um, uh, you know, codify some of those lessons learned through uh, the, you know, damage assessment and the like, and, you know, some of the things that they're looking at, you know, move, moving forward. So, you know, kudos to the team there. Another really exciting, you know, project and, and initiative that we're aware of is the work that New Jersey Office of Emergency Management is doing and, and their, you know, hub work and really, you know, bringing together, you know, all 21 counties to have a real shared situation awareness picture across the state for damage assessment, you know, shelter staff, Status, road closure of uh, that type of thing and and allow for bi-directional information sharing in in a secure way to provide for you know equitable response across the, the, the all, all 21 um, counties so really you know great work being being done there and this is a bit more of an architecture diagram of what that you know looks like using you know kind of hub to kind of centralize a lot of that activities you know being able to pull in the the counties that have you know Arctis online accounts you know with through their org and 
centralizing all of that you know, together and using Hub Premium for the have nots, if you will, to bring um, kind of the community together to, to really kind of enhance you know, shared information sharing there. So some great work being done there. And then the final example that we wanted to, uh, to talk about is you know, Texas and some of the work that Texas Department of Emergency Management, Mike, Michael Mumet and the team are doing um, in response to the, the winter weather that they experienced you know, back in February, the unprecedented power outages that they faced. And you know, a similar way, collecting information you know, from the public, both on you know, individual assistance as well as you know, public assistance, you know, pulling all of that information you know, together, having you know, these ISTAT and PSTAT forms that they're able to collect information quickly. And then you know, not only centralizing that from you know, pulling the information in, but then more, also important, you know, getting that back out to the counties using Hub, and we don't have it shown here, but you know, um, Hub Premium to now be able to share um, information with the counties on just the information from the from that jurisdiction that was impacted and being able to uh, to, to share it. So really, some new and innovative approaches being taken, you know, on the on the on the Texas side, and certainly looking to expand some of these you know capabilities into into other areas. So again, just a couple of you know great you know state examples that we wanted to share with you all um, um, today. So so switching gears a bit, we wanted to share with you a little bit in terms of um, some technology updates. What are some new um, technology enhancements you know coming from from the Esri side that you know could you know, hopefully continue to help you in your mission, help you meet your your mission mission needs, and a lot of this based on you know our, our lessons learned from um, the COVID response and, and and learning from you all. So first of all, just again you know looking at Hub to help enhance you know information sharing, and, and in my mind the key thing is you know helping to put data and apps in context, right? If you've got an official site of information and you've got a set of data and apps that you know go to support that, you know Hub is is really a great way to put that, you know, those data and apps in context with your official site, you know, through initiatives. I mean, we did this through our the work on the, the COVID hub, and many of you did this, you know, in a similar fashion to support the needs of your constituents and your, um, you know, um, agencies. So, um, you know, that's, you know, looking at things from a hub perspective. One of the things that we really saw is the need for secure information sharing between different Arctis Online, you know, organizations. And this is something that we saw, you know, time and time again through, ho through COVID. So people would log in through their kind of built-in or enterprise logins to be able to save the information. You know, other organizations could kind of BYOI, if you will, and bring their own identity and gain access to the shared um, information and shared, you know, set of groups. And then finally, so that in my mind, that's kind of the haves. And then in con conjunction with this, there's the group of kind of the have nots, if you will, the, the, the folks that didn't have access to ArcGIS Online credentials could be served through the Hub Premium um, Community Org. And there was, you know, one case where there was through the Hub premium org, there was a, a pastor from a VOAD that requested credentials. There was a, a general that requested credentials. And so I kind of sat back and thought to myself, you mean you have a GIS an and it's set up like a bar joke, right? You have a GIS analyst, a pastor and a general all sharing, you know, information and all kind of working together. So, I mean, it's in all seriousness, that's very, you know, kind of inspiring and really um, you know, awesome to see the level of collaboration that's, you know, kind of facilitated, you know, there. And so we'll, we'll talk about in a sec how that's, you know, this workflow is, you know, being Enhance with, with partner collaboration moving forward to make this even you know more frictionless. Um, you know a couple of you know lessons learned are being brought in into Hub. Um, you know the ability. You know obviously you know the the need to access information on mobile devices was was validated, and that's just one little trick that has been implemented through some of the Hub work through iFrames, for example, the ability to have a, a mobile URL override so your constituents on mobile devices have a a pleasant experience based on the app that's appropriate for the device that they're that they're um, you know using and then you know data set views were you know updated you know at the end of March to help improve the experience based on different content types and the team put a lot of work um, um, into that um, but as I mentioned you know in the, in the April release partner collaboration was a big uh, update and the, again a lot of this was you know lessons learned um, you know based on the response to COVID to help you know make this more you know kind of streamlined so really what this means is it allows for two Arctis online you know organizations to moat to work more securely and more effectively with each other's you know contents if you want you can have you know shared update groups but for me the real kind of key thing is the ability for collaboration coordinators with inside both organizations to facilitate
state, you know, adding the appropriate members, you know, to each of those groups. So in my mind, you know, what that really kind of looks like is, you know, we've got a, you know, if you've got a traditional emergency management, you know, Arctis Align account, obviously we have our GIS administrator or set of administrators that are, are leveraging that. There's a common group that's set up for, for information sharing, but really before the April release of Arctis Online, all the onus was on, you know, the one, the one side of the organization to be able to get people into this account, being able to, you know, facilitate, you know, shared access through groups, you know, two things like the fire department or the health department or other kind of coordinating organizations. But now, you know, this is the, you know, with partner collaboration, we can distribute some of that administrative burden to get people added to the groups across, you know, organizations. We can have a collaboration coordinator on the emergency management side that can take of all the people that need to be added there, as well as the, the org organizations that are partnered with that, like, you know, fire or health or public safety, whatever the case may be. So both people now can add people, you know, as appropriate, and that should really help, you know, streamline, you know, access. And, you know, so think about, you know, so that, you know, and thinking about moving forward and to prepare for the upcoming seasons, how is that something that you could, you know, leverage, you know, for example, if, you know, FEMA region six wanted to have, you know, Texas and Oklahoma and, you know, Louisiana all set in, in partner collaborations, those, you know, relationships could be set up beforehand, the uh, partner collaboration could be configured so the secure flow of information you know happens between all of these you know um, these organizations so I think it's something for you all to to think about you know put yourself in the center of this picture this could be the state and the counties or the state and counties and other you know state organizations that are all kind of you know work together so we think this is you know you know certainly based based on past experience this is something that's been very helpful and we we hope this is valuable to you you know looking forward as you prepare um, you know, for the next crisis. In, in you know, some other technology updates that we think are, are, are certainly critical is the improvements with inside um, dashboards with, with Arcade and the ability for conditional formatting in lists and indicator widgets in, in Arcade. So uh, one of our, our new colleagues to the team put together this example dashboard for stream gauges and you can see you know, conditional formatting within the list widget based on the flood stage, you know, more nicer um, you know, list elements here highlighting the, the date and other you know information and certainly if this tripped over a trigger point we could do more and have it flash red or or be bright so there's a lot of you know conditional logic that can be applied here to really highlight the key performance indicators in things like you know dashboards that we see are, are, are critical for folks so this is you know obviously a, a stream gauge example and uh, here's a wildfire example something similar based on you know you know different treatments based on the, the, the size uh, of, of the wildfire. These will be public on our, on our DRP hub here in a, in a week or two as we finish them up. But I think just, you know, some examples that, you know, we wanted to share with you all to further, you know, kind of trick out your, your, your dashboards for, um, you know, getting better information to your, your decision makers. Another, you know, recent enhancements is, is data expressions with inside dashboards and really to generate new key performance indicators. So for example, a, a state challenged us recently to say, we need to be able to communicate how many um, particular counties at any time are indicated by or impacted by a watch or a warning. And so it, it was challenging for us to kind of do that, you know, out of the box. But our, again, one of our new colleagues found a way to leverage data expressions to, you know, do this and essentially create a new layer on the fly within the dashboard for this, you know, intersection that, you know, where counties intersect with all weather, and then using that within the summary and the indicator widgets to kind of pull across um, you know, that information. So I think another great, you know, kind of key and enhancement there. Um, another enhancement that we're excited about is um, velocity, the ability to have real-time analytics, you know, based in a, in a cloud environment to be able to apply, you know, some, you know, real-time monitoring logic to, you know, your jurisdiction and, and, and what's going on. So, uh, you know, again, now being able to do that in in, in the cloud, you know, leveraging, you know, Kubernetes, you know, kind of behind the scenes. And so some really interesting workflows, you know, emerge from, you know, the emergency management perspective. So for example, here in this scenario, we're looking at, um, you know, pulling in data and understanding, you know, where the things that we care about, the hospitals, the childcare centers, the fire station intersect with, you know, bad things, you know, lightning strikes or, you um, um, storm quarters from our partner DTN and the like. So it's really not, you're not looking at all the data here on the left. You're looking at where any of those key 
you know, elements of critical infrastructure are, are impacted uh, and, and intersect with those bad things. And those, this is just happening automatically behind the scenes, you know, using velocity. And so this is what the, the, the analytic looks like. We have um, the bad things that may impact our jurisdiction here on the left in terms of, you know, whatever, you know, live feed or sets of live feeds that is lightning strikes, flood warnings, storm quarters, and like essentially understanding where that intersects and perhaps some, you know, buffer with things that we care about. About. Again, hospitals, police stations, um, child care centers and the like, and then kind of creating that quote unquote at risk layer, you know, at the end of that. And certainly there's more that can be done if there's alerting that needs to take place on the, the right hand side of this model, sending text messages, sending emails and the like, being able to alert others like, like watch officers. I think a, a lot of promise for um, the value that this can provide from a monitoring perspective, from an emergency management uh, perspective. So actually this example was covered in, in a recent webinar, just search for ArcGIS Velocity Emergency Management, and you'll find the, the webinar that, that Suzanne Foss and, and, and Ryan recorded you know, on these workflows. So if there, you want to learn more, there's certainly you know, additional resources. Um, switching gears again, I think one of the things we wanted to share with you is you know, some of the, the tools and resources at your, your disposal that are provided from a solutions perspective. So as we mentioned, we have a set of solutions for emergency management that are available now. So if you launch the, the solutions uh, tool with Inside ArcGIS Align, there's actually an emergency management section with a, a collection of apps that's growing over time. The main ones that we've been focusing on you know, so far are really you know, emergency management operations and, and damage assessment. Um, there's other things like, you know, obviously all the, the, the COVID solutions uh, coming soon, the return to work solutions, but, you know, other things like, you know, flood impact analysis and, and, and that type of thing. And we'll talk about in a sec how this, you know, this collection will, will be growing. So this is a quick way now with just a couple of clicks to be able to provision these capabilities within your org. Um, there's also a, an emergency response hub template initiative. So that's one of the, the template initiatives as you're looking to launch, you know, hub template Templates, just simply look for the emergency response uh, templates that's there today, and it will lay down this that's app that's really kind of pointing to a lot of the apps that are included from the solution template side. So all of this stuff, you know, exists today and is our, our tools and resources, you know, at your um, um, disposal. So moving ahead, there's some things I, we wanted to share with you, kind of the road ahead and some of the things that are, are coming next. And so in the next week or so, our summer release will be, uh, will be coming out from the solutions team, including a brand new damage assessment template that we'll talk about here in a second. Um, debris management, updates to you know, emergency management operations. Um, and this is obviously just kind of across the, the whole public safety perspective. You know, looking ahead, you know, in the second half of the year, the team will be looking at you know, community risk, risk reduction from kind of from a fire perspective, but that certainly has overlap with, from the mitigation side from an emergency management perspective. So certainly a lot of uh, you know, update, you know, exciting updates planned, and you'll see some of that here in a sec. But the team, I also wanted to note that the team's always looking for feedback on some of the existing apps that are there today and, and certainly welcomes input on, on direction for, for, for what's next. So we're excited to share with you um, an update on some of the you know, updates that are coming to the damage assessment solution in the next week or two. So we're taking this from kind of a single app that's just simply survey one, two, three, to now a suite of apps that provides you know, multiple you know, benefits to help kind of streamline the process from you know, collecting information from the public, windshield surveys, you know, traditional IA and PA forms, and then and, you know, a QA, QC process to help streamline the process of getting that to FEMA. We've you know, based on you know feedback from the community, we've we've standardized on the on the FEMA schema for this. FEMA has existing you know individual assistance and public assistance um, solution or excuse me survey one two three forms that are in the community gallery today, and the, the damage assessment template will simply leverage that uh, today. And so we've also you know take advantage of some recent updates within survey one two three to help streamline a lot of this you know process to to help get it there. So a little bit kind of broader look instead of just kind of the the, the, the field staff with, you know, going out doing, um, you know, their surveys with, you know, either IA or PA forms, they've broadened this to now incorporate some of the citizen workflow that we've seen out there. There's a whole, there's also a whole kind of a management side, kind of a QA, QC kind of process that, that's been added. So, you know, on the citizen side, it's a public template for the, the survey one, two, three form that you're getting. Um, we wanted to provide a, a windshield survey report so you can collect information information quickly early on, just, you know, kind of from an IA and PA perspective 
perspective. We also include the traditional, you know, forms from FEMA for both individual assistance, the individual kind of express survey, as well as, as public assistance. And, you know, additionally, there's a whole kind of management workflow that we'll highlight here in just a sec to kind of help you manage, monitor, and minister, you know, kind of the work, you know, coming in. So again, really a suite of tools that will be at your disposal here, you know, very, very quickly. Um, um, this is all wrapped up with a with a hub template that's included. So both an an external destination to have the public you know launch their form and or you know look at current photos if you allow, as well as an internal destination to help you know provide the QR code, some you know quick instructions for the elements that that people will be working on, as well as launching some of the the monitoring and management you know applications that are um, uh, included as a part of this. So um, from a you know, in a, a management perspective, the ability to see the work that's been done so far in the field, be able to, you know, assign and, and triage status of this. Is this submitted? Is this, you know, duplicated? Is this now a sign that we have need to go out, have someone else, you know, go out and validate, you know, this work? We can help. Uh, there's tools here to help you, you know, streamline that kind of workflow process and, and tasking through, a, through an app here. There's still, you know, the traditional app for understanding, you know, a status, you know, through the um, operations dashboard here to see how things have progressed, you know, kind of so far, um, a configuration of the, uh, the uh, um, uh, photo viewer here, the attachment viewer to be able to see the work that's been done so far, pardon my neighbors that I took pictures of when I was testing this a, a little bit ago. And then there's finally, there's a set of administ you know, kind of administrative uh, functions, the ability to generate reports, which is a, a great tool within Survey123 that should really be helpful. Some notebooks for exporting photos or archiving in incidents, which is some other kind of common workflows that we see. So again, you know, the next week or two, this will, will be out and I think we'll really provide some exciting enhancements um, to you all. And really, this is based on a lot of feedback that we heard from you and some of the, uh, the lessons learned in your, your work over the past um, couple of years. Uh, additionally, there's a debris management solution that's coming out as well. This is out also very you know, comprehensive um, in terms of you know, what it does. And, and Chris Delaney and the team did a great job of really digging in and understanding you know, requirements of this. You know, I won't go into as much detail here, but just a bit of a teaser that the debris management solution is coming out uh, soon for, you know, looking at things from a clearance perspective, an assessment perspective, and then kind of dealing with contractors to remove the, the debris. So there's a whole suite of apps now in, in different mobile apps based on the various function. Again, a set of tools for kind of helping manage and QA and QC um, uh, of the process. And then finally, a set of tools, especially from the contractor side, to, to create load tickets, to follow the FEMA standards that are there to help manage the kind of debris removal, you know, status. So again, Again, um, just wanted to highlight that this is, you know, com something coming here uh, in a few weeks for you all to uh, uh, to take a look at. So now, kind of in the in the last section here, we wanted to, you know, talk about some, you know, resources to help you prepare for for the next crisis. What are some of the, you know, some additional resources beyond, you know, just kind of what we've shared to help you, you know, prepare. You know, so first of all, we wanted to give a shout out to the the NISDIC Geospatial Preparedness Community. Um, a lot of great discussion, you know, happens you know, on these events, appreciate the leadership of, of Daniel and, and Jason, you know, over the years and bringing this group together, they've, you know, add, there's, they've added more with, with Josh, Richard and Scott kind of being added to the, to the leadership of this. And, you know, as, as I've seen, you know, great discussion, you know, how do you, you know, how do you prepare for help descending on your, you know, EOC when people come and how do you document that from a government's perspective? How do you, you know, bring in additional resources and some other, you know, best practices? So some great discussion that, that happens here. And so I would certainly strongly encourage the state emergency management, you know, GIS leads as well as the, the GIOs to participate, you know, in this in this committee. I really think you'll gain a lot from it, a lot from the what's being shared. And, I, and I'm told the next meeting is 10 scheduled for for August 4th at, at noon Eastern so something definitely to pencil in uh, in your calendar if you fall within that um, group uh, also wanted to mention you know FEMA and all the great work that they do to provide um, resources you know for the community certainly they've got a great you know hub as well with just an amazing amount of you know data sources federal state you know local for various you know disasters and disaster types and I've done a great work um, you know providing this information uh, one of the th things that they're doing more this year here is um, 
providing access to post event imagery. They've did that with their imagery data management, um, you know, at, you know, solution and infrastructure, you know, last year. And I think look for more imagery to be, you know, coming and available, you know, for, from them. So it's a great destination to check out. Also a mechanism to contribute your resources as well to make sure that your appropriate state, you know, resources are, are provided. They actually use Hub um, to help run their geospatial coordination calls. So if there's an incident or event that impacts, you know, your jurisdiction, um, you know, certainly um, the, the great resources from the state. Many state, many of you have spoken on their calls through COVID and others, you know, for the, the past year. So really appreciate the, the coordination that they do from a from a community perspective. And also just make sure to know and, and coordinate with your FEMA regional GIS leads. Obviously, there's 10 of them kind of across the, the, the country. And again, another, um, you know, great resource. Um, another thing that we wanted to highlight is the work from 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 Richard and GIC and, and, and really appreciate the valuable resource that they provide to the community for um, post event imagery. And so just last night, you know, they provided imagery from the tornado that hit, you know, outside of the, um, you know, the Chicago area, you know, at, in a service that's ready to go that you all can, you know, add in to your, you know, existing, you know, applications and the like. So special shout out, thank you for, for Richard and the team for providing this valuable resource to the community. And if you're not um, familiar with this and in, in, in haven't leveraged this in, in your state, you should definitely check it out. And, and get added into this. Um, finally, a couple of you know key you know posts from from our side. So there's you know a couple of key you know resources that are, are important. Um, obviously, you know with public applications, it's it's really important that they can stand up to a viral load. A lot of you know safeguards have already been in, put in place. A lot of ways to kind of uh, make sure that folks are following you know best practices as they're kind of going through the workflow to really benefit from. I mean, the John Hopkins site got like something crazy like three trillion hits you know last year, and so there's you know your apps you know can handle that viral app you know uh, th that is load as well. But just a couple of reminders on on best practices. Certainly in this blog post, kind of talking about some of the recent um, settings that have been put in place and make sure that you don't share editable layers. Editable layers, you know, obviously you don't want the public editing those, but those can't scale as well through the CDN. So we want to make sure that those are, are turned off and the views are set up, you know, appropriately, as well as some recent considerations for, you know, applying, you know, backups and having copies of your, your, your data. So a, a great um, recent post that was, you know, shared just a couple of weeks ago. And then finally, you know, additionally, there's another, you know, great resource on, you know, kind of the top you know, things to do from a, a viral apps perspective, you know, feature layer views have been you know, added over the years. So those are critically important. Make sure you're not sharing editable data. Um, you want to make sure that the CDN is configured, you know, properly, the cache control and making sure that's synchronized with your edits appropriately. Um, don't include date filters. You know, there's a couple of other things there. Um, if you really do have heavy edits, then, you know, the, in constant edits across a, a large team of people, then maybe premium data store would need it. Again, another link we can share with you, you know, after this event. And then, um, Finally, you know, from a you know Esri perspective, we'll continue to share things that we find you know on our disaster response program hub page. You know, organized around the kind of the common disaster types, you know, wildfires, hurricanes, and the like. And certainly, kind of just added in you know drought you know recently to this uh, collection. There's actually a, a bunch of great data for you know, weekly, monthly, and yearly kind of exposure information from from NOAA that we've added uh, to this collection. And an update to the um, drought aware application will be launched here. You know, short with a, the modern look at from things from kind of a drought tracking uh, application. So we'll, you know, continue to, you know, keep these sites information, you know, updated. We'll certainly want to echo and, and highlight all of your great work and, and resources, um, you know, as, as well. So I know that we kind of covered, you know, a lot of ground. Actually, I think the next slide, I think I'm going to turn this over to you, Anthony. I guess any other kind of comments from, from your side on these, you know, last two topics in terms of, of partnering and, and next steps? Yeah, you, you covered a lot there, Jeff, so thank you for doing that. Um, you know, I think from, from our perspective on partnering with states and other organizations, private sector, public sector, um, a couple of key things that we've seen is uh, for success is, is running coordination calls. So that's uh, something we can help you with, or that's something that your account team can help you with. Um, but we've seen that as an effective way of really collaborating with, with the locals, with private sector, uh, anybody who's kind of involved in, uh, in those issues there. So, uh, and also 
uh, looking at those ArcGIS Online groups um, and hubs so you can share that, that public information. I think Jeff gave a little bit of background, uh, kind of like some, uh, a little bit of window dressing for how you can uh, use ArcGIS Online groups and hubs to uh, collaborate data, maybe from the locals up to the state or the state to the Fed or however you want to do that. Um, there's definitely techniques out there uh, to do that. There is, uh, you know, the disaster response program is there. It should be, you know, used as kind of a last resort, but it is there. And uh, they, we, we have used that to uh, share licenses or data or um, escalate tech support issues, sometimes get people. Um, you know, that, that team can also, you know, write a contract to get people on site if that's needed. So there's a lot of different uh, things you can do with that disaster response program. And that could be a great way of, of getting you help. Um, so these are just kind of questions uh, of just how to partner with us. And then if you want to go to the next slide, I did okay. share a couple of links here uh, in the chat. Uh, so I, I, I shared that uh, that new hurricane season blog is, is in there. And, you know, one of the things that I, I know I worked on and, and our team had worked on a lot of the tech support issues with apps really came down to, there's a lot of people using them. Um, and there is, uh, some techniques to make sure that they can handle that heavy load, uh, in the application. And another thing that's in there is using experience builder on the mobile side for some dashboards to really kind of drive that, that usage of how you use that on a mobile device. But this blog here has uh, links to the second blog I put in the chat is really making sure uh, your apps are, are using best practices for, um, for vile consumption of those. And, and, and kind of Jeff went over to some of those. The emergency management templates, the solutions, they're, they're free to use. Um, I think one of the things, I don't know if Jeff mentioned this earlier, but those could be all launched right through ArcGIS Online now. So uh, I don't, th th sometimes that's not, um, maybe that's glossed over a little bit, but you actually don't need ArcGIS Pro or desktop to launch those anymore. You don't have to download them. You can launch them all right through ArcGIS Online. It builds out all the apps, all the data sets, um, all the feature services that you need to launch those applications and you can save them right in your ArcGIS Align org. So that's a, that's a huge time saving. I mean, you can launch those in a few minutes. Um, so look at those, look at those templates there. And, um, and once you have those, you can obviously edit them for your own use. So if you need to add in other data layers or you want to add in other, other layers of data to, uh, to those applications, you can obviously do that. You don't have to use it as is. It's, it's, it's there intended to be a starter kit uh, for the apps and for a lot of the hub sites. So a lot of those hub sites are actually configured now with some of the information like, uh, like the coronavirus one last year, we, we added in some of the CDC kind of guidance on what to do. Uh, so you didn't have to go and get that yourself. Um, and those are all configurable as well. So uh, checking those apps and make sure they're, they're best practices. And then uh, work with your Azure account team on, on uh, coordinating efforts. Uh, uh, we have some additional resources on our account team that we can help you uh, launch these applications or um, figure out what products are best to do that. So, so work with your account teams and, um, and, and see how we can partner best. Because you know, obviously when you're in an event, uh, it's all hands on deck. So we can, we can help with other resources to do that. And, and a lot of you do that already and we appreciate that. And, um, you know, there's a lot of resources out there for, for, to, to, uh, to help you get along. Um, I think that's, is that what we had, Jeff? Um, yep. I think we have time for a couple of questions here. We got about seven minutes left. We answered some of the questions in the chat here. There was a question on the stream gauges layer that that layer is in the living atlas and I, I posted that blog there so you have access to that and that blog has all the stream gauge data that you have so Sean array uh, that was your question does anybody we can Amy can we go unmute here and and maybe field a couple of questions if we have time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, per, uh, those are participating in the webinar. If you'd like to put your question in the chat box or use the raise hand, um, I'd be happy to unmute you and so you can ask your question. Um, 
while we're waiting for a question, you know, we have um, we have uh, our user conference coming up, and uh, I've known I've, I've fielded a lot of questions recently. If you're current under maintenance, anyone in your organization can attend the user conference, so that uh, you can invite you know new people, executives, um, uh, anybody else that's you know kind of not directed in your group uh, can can all attend. So. We're expecting a huge crowd this year uh, as we do another virtual event. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you can make our user conference. Yeah, just to, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, caller. It's one, two, 25. Oh. I thought we had a question. Yeah. Maybe not. Is there? Was someone about to ask a question? You're more than welcome to ask now. Okay. Well. All right. Shy bunch for an is <laughs> I No, I should have added 15 more slides, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I guess just a couple of things to pile on to the to the user conference. Certainly, there's there's some, some public safety sessions. So a lot of great um, user presentations, both across public safety and state. So so check those out. Some SIGs on on Friday. We are going to have a. Um, Homeland Security Summit, uh, it will be virtual later this year. I think that's December 7th and 8th. So look for more information on that if you want to. It will be unfortunately be virtual this this fall. I, I definitely look forward to getting to be back and with you uh, in person here uh, shortly. So. She, her, hers. She gives her. Good question there. Oh yeah, and I think I think another question about the presentation. I think Amy, will you, you you'll share this out and uh, share the slides out and some links and stuff afterwards. Is that right? Yes, I um, there will be there we are recording this presentation today, and I will be glad to uh, and I, so everyone in participating in who registered will be receiving the recording, um, and if I will be glad to include those links in the e um, in the recording email as well. Did you also want me to include the slide share the slides as well? Um, yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah, we'll okay. work on that. Yep. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that as well. All right, we'll get you a copy of those, Amy. Uh, hey, thank you, Amy uh, and Emily and the Nystic team for uh, for hosting this today, and uh, thanks to Jeff for presenting. And if you all have any other follow up questions, uh, I think most of you know how to get a hold of me. So. Well, thank you, uh, Anthony and Jeff, for that wonderful presentation today. Um, it was and for all, providing all these wonderful resources. We will be sure to get those out to everyone who came. And if would and participants, if you would not mind, I'm just putting this in the chat to fill out a one minute survey on today's webinar. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, otherwise, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. And once again, thank you so much to Anthony and Jeff for this incredible presentation, all the resources provided. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of your week. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.